Welcome to the Candle Business Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Kirsty Allen, and I am the Candle Business Coach. I'm also a mum of three and a kindness advocator. This podcast is all about making and selling candles, business development, and mindset, delivered to you with advice, inspiration, and motivation in a new episode every Friday. This episode is proudly sponsored by Aussie Insurance. When you start your candle making business, it's important to set the right foundations in place. Aussie Insurance have created a specialised policy for candle makers, which includes public and product liability insurance. They are the only insurance company I recommend for candle makers because they pride themselves on delivering insurance differently. Aussie are an online company and their passion is all about educating and supporting small businesses with the tools you need to grow and succeed along your journey. Visit aussie.com, spelled A-U-Z-I dot com, to learn how the team can help you with all your insurance needs for your candle business. Welcome back to the podcast, my friend. Today we have another candle maker conversation, this time with the beautiful Jess from Etsy and Co. Jess, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and tell us a little bit about your journey? Of course. Hey guys, I'm Jess. I'm the owner of Etsy and Co. I also work part time as a legal assistant. I'm a full time only parent to my darling toddler, Etsy. And uh, also a very needy French bulldog. (laughs) My candle journey uh, all began actually as a therapeutic outlet after the sudden loss of my fiancé, Ezio's father. Um, Handcrafting candles became a way to obviously heal and remember and forge a deeper connection. Mm, I love that when we... When I speak to different candle makers and I hear the different origin stories, they're all so different, but there is that that common theme of the candle making process is very therapeutic. It's very definitely it's very relaxing. It's well, once you know what you're doing, it can be a bit stressful to begin (laughs) with. But once you're in a bit of a a routine with it, it becomes a way to switch off from the world and it becomes a way to just lose that sense of time in the most beautiful way. Definitely in all aspects of it, I found. So obviously you've got a beautiful son named Ezio, and I'm assuming that's the connection with the name of your business. Um, but where does the... right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you obviously wanted to have and co. Does that mean anything significant as well? I mean, it's more so about family. So in terms of telling you a bit about the origin of it, I formed Ezio and Co. as a tribute to a cherished legacy. Um, our aim was to create a brand as unique as our journey. So our candles are like, you know, little love notes crafted with a touch of history. It's not just a brand. It's basically us bottled up in wax. And, you know, it's all about family and love, resilience, and, of course, you know, the good stuff that turns into those precious memories. Mm. It's so meaningful for you. There's more than just I want to make some money, so I'm going to make some candles. It's not oh, It's no, not as transactional. Not. <laughs> there, not there's more to it. it. There's more yeah, heart and soul definitely goes into it, and I think that that's shining through, and that's the feedback we've got, which has been fantastic. What have been some of the challenges you've faced with your candle making journey so far? Oh my goodness! Being a one person show, I had all these hats to wear, so trying to find the balance in my time, it made me realize that I needed some backup obviously. So whether it was getting help from suppliers or services or rallying up the troops of my family and friends, it turned into this really cool team effort in my candle making journey. So I'm definitely grateful for their support and having assisted me with all that. And how long have you been on the journey for? When did you start making candles? I've been making them for a little while, but um, actually I only launched my business a couple of weeks ago. So it's, it's definitely still fresh and it definitely still feels like it's only just begun and it has it really only has because realistically it's probably been about six months but in the lead up to that obviously you're doing all your testing and things like that that takes so much time to get to where I am now with a full-blown website and a finished product just feels so weird you know (laughs) it is a little surreal isn't it it definitely is surreal yeah when thinking about your business, I know that you're just at the beginning of it, but you're obviously full of 
hope and anticipation and excitement. How do you rein all that in to actually take action to do the tasks needing to be done? Yeah, look, it's definitely a bit of an ongoing juggling act, you know, I'll admit. So a lot of it is a matter of prioritising and multitasking and just roping in some of that help when needed, like I was saying before. So basically trying to not let the to-do list run the show. So I definitely have to say I massively rely on my notes and my calendar. They are massive friends of mine and I think that 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 definitely helps keep me organised and helps me prioritise my my day-to-day or weekly lists. Yes, especially considering you've got your first market coming up on Sunday in two know. days' time. It's just, it's just nuts. Tell Don't us all about remind that. Remind me, Kirsty. I'm currently forgetting <laughs> the day, but um, forty-eight hours to get. <laughs> That is very exciting and also very nerve-wracking because at the end of the day, you know, you are definitely putting yourself out there and you have no idea what the feedback is going to be. But ultimately, I think, you know, I'm there because I want to embrace the community. I want to embrace what we're about and be able to share that with others and hopefully take them on that journey of being able to create those special moments and memories for themselves as well. Yes, absolutely. And one of those things... Also, one of the things about candles is that it's such an emotive product. It helps you remember things from the past, but it also helps you create new experiences with your loved ones. I mean, how often do we light a candle, you know, at a dinner party with our friends and family? Or how often do we light a candle when we want to have some self-care? It brings Mm. in different elements of our world and it amplifies our experience in such a beautiful way. And the fact that you've like you've seen this you know it means so much to you as well and that's why you started your business and that's why you're doing your first market and you're experimenting with new things it's because it's so important to you and I think that's something that can really bring a lot of candle makers together is that we have this passion and this obsession this beautiful obsession with candles and it's not just candles like if if you would know absolutely not yeah when you speak to people you know outside of the candle world or the candle making world rather they go, oh, it's like a candle. It's like, is it is it a big thing? Are there many people that do it? Is you know, is there much to it? Don't don't you just pour wax and fragrance in a in a jar and there you go? Like, <laughs> and you sort of think, oh my gosh, like you have, yeah, like you have no idea how massive the world of candle making is and the intricacies and the knowledge needed and the skills you need to to learn. There's so much to it, and I think if you think about it too much, you can you can overwhelm yourself. Uh, it can definitely too... gets overwhelming, yeah. yeah. You really have to break it down. Yeah, definitely. But I'm curious, even though you're at the beginning of your journey, what's been your <laughs> biggest win so far? Oh, that's pretty easy. I mean, seeing my son genuinely wanting to be part of that candle making journey after all it is called Ezio and Co. So from, you know, carefully helping me heat gun the tops of the candles to placing lids on the jars with pride and even you know pondering over candle names so he'll sit there smelling it all and tell me what it smells like really gives me a different insight you know and so it's a really heartfelt journey having him right there with me in the mix of it all so yeah Mm -hmm. I think it's so important to include and involve our children when we have when we're parents and we're wanting to build something for our families and and also for ourselves we want to build a legacy for um you know their families to involve them in the process rather than keeping them separate there's so many candle makers i speak to that think and it's not necessarily right or wrong it's just a way of thinking is that i'll only work on my business when my children are napping or i'll only work on my business when my children are at school and you, you kind of live like this second life that people mm. that your children don't even realize is, is a huge part of your journey through your life. And of course, you know, you've got to be careful with hot wax around, around kids and all that sort of, of thing. Course. But of course, <laughs> I guess that's saying, but I'll say that's anyway. why he only helps me heat gun them. <laughs> yes, yes. But to let them know that the reasons why you're building a business and why you chose candle making and what it means to you and to inspire them to live their journey as well and hopefully create something for themselves, you know, if they feel called to. And when they get older, they can see that it's possible no matter what your results are from your business, no matter how you define success. But to strive for something more and know that you are made for more can be really inspiring for our children. It's important to show them the journey and, and to include them along the way. Most definitely. It's a very exciting thing to be able to involve our children. And I mean, just slightly off topic, actually, I I decided the other day, 
not not that it was something I wanted to do, but I decided to dedicate a Saturday to doing a garage sale. And, you know, just to ensure that my son could be part of that journey. I mean, since COVID, you know, while cash still goes around in the community, it's not prominent, you know. And so, of course, for Ezio to be able to experience, I gave him a little bum bag and put some cash in there. And, you know, he started helping me set up shop, so to speak. And, um, and he was telling everyone, you know, this is my toy and this is for someone else now and things like that. And, and essentially by the end of the day of his dealings, he actually took that money and we went and bought him a bicycle with it. So being able to showcase that side of things is really important, I think, in the growth of our children because exposing them to hard work and what that means at such a young age is just ultimately what builds their future. Absolutely. It's just so important to to know that we're always teaching our kids and to include them in the journey rather than yeah, it's rather more than fun with them in it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's how they learn, it's how they grow, it's how they develop and you know, we just don't know the impact that we have with our kids until they're older, until we see them making their own choices and go, oh, wow, like that that lesson that I taught them or that thing that I showed them or that experience I shared with them has actually made a difference in their journey. I think it's just, it's just an incredible part of life. It is, yeah. This episode is brought to you by the membership for candle makers, the Candle Makers Collective. Becoming a member gives you access to fortnightly online group Q&A coaching sessions to support you, monthly online workshops and trainings to help you grow your business, plus frequent expert guest speakers to inspire and teach you. You'll also have access to an ever-growing resource library with templates, guides, planners, and eBooks. But my favorite aspect of the membership is our exclusive Facebook group for accountability, connection and support so if you're looking to take your candle business to the next level and learn more about the membership for candle makers click the link in the show notes for the candle makers collective what are your goals for your business what do you actually want to get out of it young co just to keep sharing the candle joy and to stay true to our eco-conscious mission so it's all about those good vibes and amazing scents, really, you know, so doing our bit where we can and trying to produce happiness with everyone. Yeah, I love that. It's so nice to think that we can create these positive experiences with our mm. customers just by making a candle that brings us so much joy as well and then sharing yes. it with them and the doing simplicity. it in a way. Yeah, and doing it in a way that's in alignment with what our values are at the same time. Yeah. What does your weekly routine look like as a small business owner and a mum as well? <laughs> it's a wild mix of, you know, pouring candles, answering emails, packing orders, uh, working my day job, and then negotiating with a toddler over snacks. So, you know, <laughs> usual small business chaos, I guess. It, yes. uh, it's, it's like there is no concrete answer to that because I think that when you have children particularly you have to be flexible and it's it's in their time for the most part you know so just sort of trying to make the most out of the time that you have when you have it so that's yeah I guess how I tend to run my my routine I think it's nice to not have something completely set in stone because then if a span is thrown in the works it can sort of throw you off and cause oh, more chaos it definitely upsets you that's for sure yeah, you've just <laughs> got to be flexible and have a loose plan and just take action as best you can depending on what the day throws you I think that that's something that I've honestly learned with time particularly being an only parent is that I actually used to be a bit more I guess strict with my time and what I wanted to achieve for a day but as soon as you throw children into that, it just, you know, your day and its diversity of just what you do is just, you know, there is no concrete answer to, to getting it all done. That's right. <laughs> What's your favourite thing about what you do? It'd have to actually be lighting up the finished product. So, you know, that magical moment when all the chaos just turns into a glowing masterpiece, you know, there's so many different facets to the business. And so I think, finally seeing that finished product and getting to enjoy it is really, really special. Mm, I, I would agree. Making candles is, is amazing, but then enjoying the end product 
is mm. just next level because you made that like you've created yeah, that from raw ingredients <laughs> yeah it is unbelievable it's um it's very humbling to think that you can create something that can relax people and bring yeah. them so much joy and and, and I, memories and that's the other thing I actually had a mum come to me the other day at Ezio school and say to me you know god is that your candle business it's just so creative and I was I was really taken back by that because it was just like someone rec- recognizing something in me that, to be honest, I, I I always dreamt of having a creative side of what I do for a business. But you know, to actually hear that from someone else is pretty special. It validates and reconfirms that you're on the right path when other Definitely. people can see in you what you know is inside of yourself. But it allows you to, yeah, shine out your light into the world. And then the ripple effects of that, it just, they can be so big. Yeah. No, it was lovely. What gives you motivation to keep going when things get tough? Sorry. Um, Without without a doubt, my son. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. And I think when we've got someone in our life that means the absolute world to us and inspires us to keep going despite our challenges, it's, it's incredibly, what's the right word? It's incredibly powerful but also very humbling that we're blessed enough to have the people that we have in our lives. Oh, we are so blessed, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm grateful for him every day, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's pretty special. Our children are incredible beings and for those of us that are parents, it's it's a journey. <laughs> and I, I, mean that in a, I mean that in a beautiful way, but, yes, it's a journey and a long journey a long journey at least 18 <laughs> years worth at least <laughs> but they teach us to learn more about ourselves they teach us to become the best versions of ourselves if we're willing to go down the path of personal growth and I'm a huge advocate of that mm. particularly when it comes to business if you want to run your business you have to grow personally you, you can't Definitely. you can't not they they go hand in hand but mm. when we can look at our children and go and think and know that they're inspiring us to become the best version of ourselves as possible. It's truly a privilege that unfortunately not everyone is able to experience, but necessarily not, sorry, but not necessarily um, everyone wants to experience it as well. But it just amplifies our journey through life in just such a beautiful way. It does, definitely. No, I'm definitely grateful for that. How do you define success? Success for me, you know, those happy dances when someone tells you that, you know, our candles brought them a moment of calm after a crazy day or it's the joy in crafting something that sparks, I guess, smiles. So it turns what would be, say, an ordinary moment into a little happiness explosions, you know. And I just actually had a um, mum actually come up to me and say, oh, I've got to get some candles for my dinner party because I do a Christmas scent. And so, you know, she's just gone and purchased five of the um, Christmas candles for me and she's just turning that moment into something pretty special, you know, and celebrating that time with the family. So that's nice to know that we can be part of that journey too. So we're recording this uh, towards the end of November um, 2023, but it's, and so we're coming up to the Christmas period, the, the craziness that is December in terms of, you know, the shops being exploding with Christmas paraphernalia and people doing mm. sales, businesses doing sales and trying to, you know, buy for everyone's attention and to be able to make a product that can invite calm into that tornado of an experience that is December. Mm. It's so it's such a beautiful privilege to to be able to make a product that helps to bring that into people's lives to help them reset and pause and take a breath. Mm. Oh, most definitely. Is there anything that you'd like to share about your business or your journey with candles with listeners? I think that you know it's not being. It's not been an easy journey and I think if it were easy, like everyone says, everyone would do it. You've just got to have patience, be kind to yourself, educate yourself and share that with people because ultimately we're all doing the best that we can in this world, you know, Mm -hmm. so be kind where you can. Absolutely. I love that. Jess, we've come to one of my favourite parts of the podcast where I ask all my guests three questions relating to candles. Number mm-hmm. one, what is your favourite candle fragrance? I'm into the whole masculine sexy vibe, but hands down, I think one of my fragrances called Care Blossom 
takes the crown. So it's this killer mix of essentially cherry blossoms with a dash of spicy amber. So, you know, it just sets the mood just right. But I do have plenty of favourites. It's (laughs) It's hard to narrow down. It's actually hard to narrow it down. I mean, who doesn't burn a candle and just loves it, you know? So, no, definitely that would be my favourite right now, though, Kyo Blossoms. Number two, what do you love about candles? Candles work like, how would you put it, um, mood magicians, I guess. (laughs) Uh, You know, they transform just regular spaces into cosy centuries. So, you know, it's the little things that bring out the ambience and atmosphere making a place truly feel like home. You know, my neighbour said to me the other day when he picked up one of my candles, he said, oh, this just smells like when I was a kid playing with all my toys. And I was like, yes! (laughs) You know, just being able to know that you have that, that impact and that ultimately is the love for what I do. That's beautiful. And the last question is, what is one piece of advice you'd like to give to other candle makers during their journey? Patience is key. Now, I'm not exactly the poster child for endless patience, but in the candle making journey, it's literally like a crash course. You know, you mess up a pour and there's wax everywhere and suddenly you're on this fast track to learning the art of just taking things slow. So, yeah, embrace the waiting game. It is a it is an absolute game changer. I love that so much. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being on the podcast today. I'm so grateful for you and your journey and sharing it with us and the, list, the listeners and myself. Where can we find you online if people want to connect in with you? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So um, I actually, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram um, at Etsio and Co. Now I'll spell that just because everyone thinks the shop Etsy, it's not. <laughs> it's <laughs> E-T-Z-I-O-A-N-D-C-O. So Etsio and Co. So on Facebook and Instagram, and you can shoot me an email as well at hello at etsioandco.com.au or you can check out, you know, the whole vibe on our website. So yeah, easy peasy. Perfect. So I'll put the links in the show notes so people can connect in with you. Again, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's been an absolute treasure chatting with you. No, a a big thanks to you, Kirsty, for choosing to have me on your podcast. You know, your positive vibes and encouragement honestly mean the world. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Thank you, my friend, for listening to this episode. Check out the show notes for all the links mentioned throughout the conversation. And please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And if you're feeling inspired, I would love it if you would write a review for the podcast and give a five-star rating. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day. Mm